With your design, I found the best way to bring it in um, as a JPEG is to bring it in, bring it in as a simple piece of artwork and then choose the colors. And let me show you why. Uh, on the right hand side, I'll choose the insert image. And when I choose insert image, um, the image is stored in the download. So I'm just going to go ahead and find it. I know I have a lot of things in here. Um, so here we go. There's the, the image. I know it hasn't shown up, but there it is now. Press OK. And when we bring it in as a scanned image, um, I'll go ahead and press OK. Just let you see how it is brought in. Basically what's happening is that the program sees um, the design as colors and it traces around specific colors. And you can see in here, there's a little bit of gray. Uh, sometimes I find, I'm just gonna hit continue and let things go default, uh, that bringing it in as a simple piece of artwork and then uh, choosing the colors for the program to read is sometimes a little bit better. On the left hand side, you can see that it has orange, black, gray, and dark gray. And if we scroll through here, we can see, okay, so it did bring in a couple extra pieces. I'm just gonna close this out and open a new design. I do this a lot with JPEGs um, because um, the JPEG may be, you know, clean in the sense that it is, you know, it looks uh, easy, but there's a lot of extra color information in there. So to combat that, I'll go to insert image. I'm going to find that image again. So I'll scroll down. There's the image. I'll go ahead and press OK. And instead, I'm going to choose simple artwork and deselect this option of auto select. When I deselect that, my pick color button appears. And if I click on it, I can now see the logo in this little, um, in this uh, preview window. And I can also see that I have a, um, an eyedropper with, um, that allows me to choose the colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, first of all, we always need to choose the white. So I left click on the white left click on the orange, scroll down, left click on the black, and if I need to zoom in, I can zoom in a little bit. And actually zooming in, you'll see all that little extra color. You can see that on the edges here, and you can see that color kind of changing at the bottom. So I'm gonna scroll in and left click on the gray as well, and press OK. So what I've done is I said, okay, only read these four colors any other color, merge it with one of those colors. So I'll go ahead and press OK. And after I press OK, it gives me the size. I'll just press OK again. And then there's the design. I'll go ahead and hit go. And now you'll see you only have the three colors instead, um, which actually wasn't probably very good um, because it's got all these little extra pieces. It's actually even worse. So we're gonna try something else. Close this out. We'll go to a new design. We'll go to insert image again. Scroll down. Choose the color. Press OK. And um, we'll do, actually, we'll do scanned image. We'll, we'll go through it this way. Press OK. Now, before, it only had this little piece of white in here, uh, or, or gray. Let's hit the edit button. And in here, what we can do is we can combine the colors uh, that we don't want to show. So this one right here, you can see this one uh, is the inside of the A. And if I put my cursor over on the white, what color I want it to be, I can right click. And oh, I'm sorry, wrong thing. I'll put my cursor over the light gray that I don't want and right click, put my cursor over the white and left click. It will then make it white. So I can see that I've got all the appropriate colors. I'll go ahead and hit exit. It'll save all my changes. Now you can see that that's uh, white instead of gray. Hit continue and okay. 
and then generate the stitches. Uh, with this, if I zoom in here, I can see that this is a rather thin, oops, thin area right here. Um, there's a couple things that we can do to this design. And the first thing that I'd like to change is this lettering. Um, lettering looks a little bit messy. If I can see it in the view outline, which I clicked up here at the top, left click on view outline, and you can see the outlines that the program did make. First of all, um, if I right click on the white, it does select the white as an area. I'm just going to control delete. Then I am going to right click hold and drag a box over industrial finishes and then control delete. So I've completely deleted this lettering here. And what I like to do is click on the ruler to measure about the size of the lettering. I'm gonna start up here with a left click, hold and drag. And you can see that it's about six and a quarter millimeters. Um, you know, I've gone a little bit beyond or maybe just six millimeters. I'll press escape to get out of the tool. And then on the right hand side, I'll click on insert text. When I click on insert text, it does appear what I had been working on before, which um, I started typing in industrial and then in all caps finishes. If I left click, hold and drag, um, I found that Arial narrow was the best, um, was the best font for it. Let's put in a size six. So I just highlight it and type in six. I'm not going to do the bold and I'm going to press OK. Once I press OK, it does bring it into my design and I'm going to line it up with a left click, hold and drag. And you can see that it does, you know, fit it pretty well. If I do need to move individual letters, I can do so. Just kind of, you know, moving things into place. Um, I can always hit the edit button and maybe if I wanted to bold it, I could do so. Press OK. It does bold it up a little bit and hit go. Um, it is a little bit thick, so I'm going to hit edit again and I'm going to apply the small lettering stitch and press OK. And hit go and it looks much sharper this way. Um, I can always use these little white diamonds and move the lettering around so that it will fit. And of course, I do want to change the color, but I'll wait until the end here until I change the color. So if I left click on a diamond, then I left click hold and drag, I can move that letter along the, uh, the line. It is nice to see it in the view outline. If I left click on view outline, I can do that. So I can left click hold and drag and kind of bring it along that, that uh, text path. So left click, left click, hold and drag. Left click, left click, hold and drag. And kind of get it properly lined up. And hit go. So that kind of takes care of the lettering um, at the bottom. With the lettering up here, if I look at it in 3D mode, I can see that this is all, this is satin stitch and then this one over here is a complex fill. Um, I don't like to view in 3D very often just because it's a rendered view. It's not necessarily what you're going to see when it's stitched out. I'm going to zoom in on the delta here with a left click, hold and drag on the zoom in tool. Press escape to get out of the tool. I can also turn off the image in the background so I can see my, my lettering. You can see some of it is not quite proper the way that it is shaped. And left click on it again and it brings it back in. So I'm going to go to the view outline and here I can see the actual outlines. Um, the D looks pretty good. Um, the E might need a little bit of help. So I'm going to use the zoom in tool, left click, hold and drag, let go of the zoom in tool. And now I can see those outlines a little bit better. Press escape to get out of the tool. I'll right click. And then while I'm in the outline view, view outline, I'm going to left click on the edit mode and with the edit mode, I can now take these nodes, left click on it and then left click, hold and drag, left click, left click, hold and drag. 
And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of lining these nodes up where I think they should go. Left click, left click, hold and drag. Let me bring this down a little bit. You can see these are rather thick letters, so I might want to pull them apart just a little bit so that um, it does uh, kind of open the spacing up. Now, left click on a node and left click, hold and drag will move the nodes. If you place your cursor on the red line and right click on it, hold and drag, you can see that you can um, you know, modify it with an arc or you can actually, if I bring it down a little bit, it kind of brings it down to a straight line. Right click, hold and drag, and I'm kind of modifying it to a straight line. So what I'd like to do is kind of reshape these and this is what I do in my outline view. Um, so I'm going to scroll over, right click on the L, and it selects it. You can see I'm still in the, the edit outline mode because I've got that little hand highlighted. And now I can right click, hold and drag. Maybe uh, what I'll do is I'll take this node, left click, bring it back just a little bit, and then right click, hold and drag on the red line. Maybe bring this down a little bit, kind of get things a bit straight uh, or more straight than what, what it's got. And then I'll right click, hold and drag and then scroll over some more, right click on the T. Uh, I'm going to bring this over a little bit, trying to stay on using that background as kind of a template. So I'm just left clicking, holding and dragging, um, I'll left click, hold, left click, hold and drag. So I left click once on the item um, to select it and then left click, hold and drag. And then again on the red areas, I will do a right click, hold and drag to kind of modify that line. So right click, hold and drag. Maybe bring this down a little bit, I'm trying to keep things straight. And right click, right click, hold and drag, so it's not bowed out so much. And then the last guy here, right click on it actually pretty good but I might um, bring it in a little bit this I am going to actually widen because what we have here is a space that's actually very small so I might you know widen this up make it a little bit bigger now what you see on the inside here that's actually the white area that's not part of the a this I can actually delete so if I right click on it I can then do control hold control and then press delete I'm going to right click back inside my A, then left click, left click, hold and drag. Kind of reshape this. Now I'm going to zoom out. I'm actually going to click on this one to one, left click on it, right click off to the side, and I am going to hold my control key. Well, I'm sorry, right click off to the side to deselect everything, right click on the D. Hold my control, right click on the E, the L, the T, and the A. And instead of auto judge at the bottom, I am going to change it to become a satin. I left click on satin, and now everything is a satin stitch that I selected. The next piece, let's go ahead and zoom in on the next piece right here. I'm going to go back to that view outline. The letters are still selected, so I'm just going to right click off to the side. I'm going to right click on this guy right here and you know what I think the best thing to do is just redraw this instead of trying to fix it because it's so thin so I'm going to do a control delete then on the right hand side here I have a tool called create rectangle I left click on that I am going to change the color I left click on the color right here and then I click on the color button I'm going to choose the gray and press OK now I'm going to start where that rectangle starts, but I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that as we don't have such a thin stitch. So I'm going to left click, hold and drag, and you can see as I'm dragging, I'm making a, a square. Now with my left click um, pressed down, I'm going to hold the control, I'm going to press the control key and hold it. 
and now I can do a rectangle. So I can drag it over to the right hand side and let go of my left click mouse. I don't want to let go of the control key. Let go of the left click mouse and now it will input a rectangle. Press escape to get out of the tool. Right click to deselect and then I'm going to scroll up and I look at these guys right here. Look at the, the um, outline view. This one is a little bit more round than this side so what I can do is right click on it, go to the view, the edit mode. Maybe what I'll do is I'll bring this left click, left click hold and drag, left click, left click hold and drag, and make more, you know, the corners there. Now I can eliminate this node right here. So I left click on it, and then I right click on it and hit delete point. I left click on it, or, I'm sorry, left click on it and then right click, delete point. So now I can make that a little bit more square. So I'm going to right click on this, make it a little bit more straight, and we'll do that on the bottom here. So left click over here, left click hold and drag, left click, left click hold and drag, right click. So you can also just right click on it, delete point, but when you right click make sure that you are, you do have that um, uh, crosshair, right click, delete point. I'm going to right click here, delete point, right click here, and delete point. Now, see how these are way bowed out, so I can right click, hold and drag, bring it in, right click, hold and drag, bring it in. So um, after I've reshaped it, you know, if I want to look up here, let's say I want to delete this point and delete this point because I have two points, again I can do that with a right click, hold and drag and another right click hold and drag. Um, right click off to the side, regenerate my stitches and you can see you know it's a, a little bit more squared off. So I do need to do a couple of other things. Let's go ahead and hit one to one. First of all I need to make sure that this area, this blue, is the same color as these, this like kind of orange area. So I left click on the blue and after it's left click selected I'll place my, and, and that's on my color bar, I'll place my cursor over the orange color chip, put my, once it's over that orange color chip, right click and it will turn to the same color. Now I also have the gray here. Now I'm going to right click off to the side and I'm going to show you uh, on the left hand side, this is my stitch sequence bar, but what it's doing, it's stitching the two um, oranges and then the black and then orange, and then gray. So I can do this a couple of different ways. I can have all the black stitch first. So if I left click on the black color chip, it will select all the black in the design in that, that order. Once it's all selected in my stitch sequence bar, I'm going to right click. When I right click, I have options of where to move um, this section of stitching. I will move it to the top so when I move it to the top, this black will stitch first and then the um, and then the orange will stitch and then the gray. So I don't have as many color changes. I'm going to right click off to the side, regenerate my stitches, and um, after I do that it looks like you know I'm ready for a test stitch. So um, let's look at it in the 3D view. We can turn off the image in the background and of course one thing I did not do if I go to, I did not save it, and this is uh, something that you should do every so often. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save, and I will just name this Delta. Now this is just a uh, an IDS file, so I'm saving it in my downloads. So you would save it wherever you want on your computer. It's important to save the IDS file because if you need to make any changes to it, you can do so um, by um, coming back into this file and making any changes you want just like we did. Once we change it to a stitch file or like a DST, you're limited in the changes that you can make. So always save first and then go to export. So you can use this drop down arrow and click save DST or EXP. And in here, this is where you would save it to like your USB device. 
Um, I am just going to save it to my downloads because I'm not putting it anywhere. But I'll name it Delta, hit save, and if you look over here at the save as type, it's a DST file. So I'll hit save, and now it's an IDS file and a DST file. If you want to uh, print your worksheet, you can do so. We can name it uh, Delta and preview it, and this will show you all your design properties. So the colors it has, the, the stitch number, uh, how many trims, you know, so on and so forth. So you can scroll, you can see the whole design. This is at 100%. So we'll go ahead and close this. Uh, actually, next page, you do have a 100% design template for just the design itself. This is kind of nice because you can um, print this out, cut it out, and kind of place it on your fabric to see what it'll look like. I'll close that and basically um, that's ready for a test stitch. I'll send you this file um, along with the well with this video and um, if you have any questions let me know. Thanks.